Good evening, everybody. Um, all right, so Hess is joining me tonight. Hello. From uh, sunny Adelaide. We've got, I don't think um, we're both yeah. from Adelaide, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's just our own little slice of the furnace today. Oh yeah, just a yeah, just a um, test for tomorrow as well. I think. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be even worse then. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Um. So yeah, it's gonna be very hot tomorrow. Please, yeah. you know, everyone hopefully can stay cool. Um, but for tonight, we've got some Splatoon to bring you. So this is a pre-recorded match from last last week's round. I believe you recorded this one, yes. Uh, yeah, I sure did. So um, I guess I remember bits and pieces, but uh, <laughs> um, I'm sure I'll be speaking as if I don't know what's going on. So <laughs> Oh, that's cool. But um, no, I, I can, I can uh, say for sure there were some very good matches and very close games. So uh, I think it'll be pretty exciting to watch. All right. Well, that's our cue, I think, from the audio. We've got Krill Bill yep. versus Sailor Vimos. Um, kicking off any second now. All right. There we go. <laughs> oh, yes. No, and like, as you... Pick up there, yep. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's Clam Blitz. Clam Blitz on Piranha Pit. Of course, we've already seen a lot of this so far. We've seen lots of other matches. Mm, um, sure have. And really, the most successful pushes have all been ones that have been willing to, you know, just really, really use that aggression to their advantage. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it, it goes, it's pretty similar for most clans map, maps, uh, but we do see a lot of, uh, you know, bubble pushes especially, and also the sneaky ball ones too. So, um, but for sure, you do need a little bit of aggression on this map to sort of get some of those bigger pushes going. Mm. And of course, you know, teams need to be willing to, you know, compound a push once it starts if you just get in like get the super clam and a couple of small ones like solo match style that's not really going to get you much no no um for sure you want to keep the push level um alive as long as possible mm. so um you see some bubbles coming out there from the key but uh oh wow and suddenly, suddenly we've only got three people up. up yeah um and let's let's take a minute to sort of remark on these loadouts it's quite interesting um we've got the Luga Julie's Deco coming out on Sailor Vimos there. Um, uh, you know, which, um, I, I can't I, remember I which one that is. Are they, are they Baller? Yeah, so that one, that one does have Baller. Uh, I can't remember what's... I think it's Flash Wall, uh, yeah, and Baller. Mm. So an um, interesting combination for clans. Um, yeah. And, I, and I have... of course, we've got the... Um, a sort of the other... Not, I wouldn't call it like... I wouldn't call it a, like a unexpected pick exactly, but not necessarily the most sort of typical one. We've got that Kenza Jr. on Krill Bill. Mm. And there we see, oh wow. Um, no, no, say, oh wow, Low cool. gets through. So I'm just going to rescue that one, but uh, not before getting uh, that wipe, so... I'm yeah, not sure that was uh, worth it or not, to be honest. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess to get some initial points, but... Um, it, it was it, looking, of course, like they had something much bigger lined up. They had two big yeah. balls there, um, and unfortunately for Krillville, Sailor Vimos were just able to stop the goal. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Sailor Vimos, they're trying to get a push in now, but Carpet Town there, uh, managing that Super Clam in, mm. and... Uh, Overtake comes through nice and easily, but they don't, they didn't actually harvest that much. So it no, looks like they so, might just be locked out, even if they can keep on winning their fights. Yeah, so despite Krillbill being three down there, um, it just didn't seem like they had enough Clam 3 to actually get get a higher score going. But, and um, that... So Krillbill all kind of coming in there at once and uh, closing that down now. Mm. That last minute power clam there from Inkel just arriving about a second too late. Um, yeah. It must have been heartbreaking for them to watch in death cam. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so um, Krillville looking like they're really, you know, they've got the makings of a push here. They've certainly got all the clams they need. They've got bubbles and a splashdown ready. It's mm, all just a matter of... They need a whole lot to get the lead here, but um, obviously they will be trying to get a solid push going at this point. Mm. Um, they do have, I believe, two super clams at their disposal. One's, I think, still sitting under the basket there, mm. but uh, probably waiting to pick that up a bit later if they can, can get this push started. Yeah, and seven small clams on top of that, so there's more than enough yeah. points there for them if they're able to move them in. Oh, and Lo just going down there to that ink chat, so... Uh, yeah. So we do get the sure. power clam preserved, though, um, yeah. but it looks like attrition's working in Sailor Vimo's favourite moment. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the map's looking kind of 50-50, um, I would think, uh, at this point, but, uh, oh, mm. that's three down though on Sailor Vimos yeah. now, so, uh... The one thing in their favour is that Inkel is in the perfect position to try and do something about this, but with bubbles and armour and a splashdown, not so much you can do. 
Yeah, but uh, oh, Chich managed to get that in, so uh, then Kurbo now taking the lead there. Mm. Lakitu uh, looks like it unfortunately looks not able to. <laughs> yeah, so low low super jump was a little too far from the basket, so they couldn't do that instant toss, and they got intercepted and splattered, and their teammate couldn't then pick up the power clamp. But that's still a much improved score. Yeah, for sure. Um, Saladim is already on the ball here with uh, yeah, looks like they've got two there at the disposal and. Uh, mm. Again, a little bit back and forth, it looks like, at this point. You know, we're seeing, we're seeing a sort of small pushes back and forth. I can tell they're now getting that super claim in there. Yeah, um, and um, then Nessa, they're sitting underneath the basket, just making life hard for Krubel's defenders, and Capitan there with the overtake. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, this one's been um, constant back and forth. Yeah, so, I mean, with 30 seconds left... Um, Still anyone's game, I would say. I mean, obviously, Krubil would have slightly survived, but if they can just get a, a push going at the very last, I mean, uh, you know, very last few seconds here, um, mm. then well, they can easily if, take it. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, after the break, they're only going to need uh, war, mm, 10 points worth of clams, so either four small clams or one big clam after the first big clam. Mm, Which mm. is, yeah, very doable. Um, I'm pretty sure they haven't picked up that, that uh, freebie yet. Very sensibly, they're leaving it under the basket so it can't time out and they're guaranteed to get overtime. Yeah, very smart. And uh, we do have, um, I'm not sure what that name is, but they, they do have nine clans in, at the moment. Um, although they did splash them, so... Um, yeah, I think that's Natty there on the um, Kent's sloshing machine. Chich oh, okay. unfortunately gets flanked, but Low picks up the clam, gets the break. Ooh. So they're three down, but... They had oh. so few clams to spare as well. I think that was the last power clam that their carrier, the last um, regular clam their carrier had. There were a couple under the basket, but I don't think they could have moved there without getting splattered. Wow. Wow, what a comeback that is. I mean, being three down, the very last person, they just managed to sneak those, those plans in at the end to get that overtake, so... Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's a real clutch overtake there. Um, oh, man. Sailor very close. doing everything they could to just try and stop it, and unfortunately for them, just not quite managing it. Yeah, but um, I mean, hopefully that's good news for us, given how close that was. Yeah, um, I think yeah, we've we see had... some very good games now. Um, hopefully that sets the scene for the rest of this uh, <laughs> set. Well, yeah, you know, like, sparks flying right from the start. Um, and it's interesting seeing that, you know, especially compared to a lot of the play we've seen from other matches in this series mm. week, you know, there weren't really any single big, like, hammer blow style clams pushes there. Everything was, like... Only really one completely desultory one, just that very first one from Krillbill that had no follow-up. But all the rest, mm. no, they were, they only sort of, like, you know, they were like 40-point pushes, 30-point pushes, maybe a 50-point push. Um, none of that enormous, devastating, you know, like, 70 or 80 or 90 points that we've seen in some of the other matches. Yeah, for sure. And it was just... Um... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it did seem like the teams were working together really well to get those pushes set up. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, as you said, we didn't see some potent, like some, uh, I guess, huge ones there. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of uh, you know, kind of back and forth and just taking a lead from each other essentially. Mm. But, uh, well, of course, like it kept things tense, and I suppose as well, it meant that you know neither team was ever in a position where they could afford to just settle into a defensive stance. They, you know, they. No, never set leads that were comfortable enough that they like mm -hmm. figured they could absorb um, absorb a push. And in fact, I think every single every single clamps push was a successful overtake. Yeah, I, believe I think so, every actually. time the basket opened, every the lead one, lead yeah. changed. Yeah, uh, I think you're right there. Which is yeah, and that's another interesting interesting thing because you do get situations sometimes where you know a team might push while they're. Um, like, you might get the team that's already got the lead doing a push, or you might get a team pushing and failing to get that overtake and just, you know, ending up being counterproductive and, you know, doing nothing but giving their opponents more ammunition. Yeah, um, and I mean, I guess at times it's easier to just go, okay, let's just get the lead and then get out of there. So mm -hmm. um, maybe that's maybe that affected the way, uh, way they got played a little bit too, was just focusing on getting the lead and then trying mm -hmm. to play a bit more carefully. But um, it's like they're going now very shortly to Rainmaker. Mm, well... We've got, you know, it's, it's an interesting map here. Lots of room to just sort of punish that Rainmaker if it's not careful in its movements. Uh, it's, mm. And an Octobrush! That's really cool. Um, not something I'd expect on this map, but I suppose the Greats there do offer you a, um, some mobility options. Yeah. Actually, the Brush is running uh, a main of Quick Super Jump too, so... Um, 
be interesting to see how that um, affects the playstyle, I guess. Maybe they're intending to be able to jump to and from uh, some places. Mm. But, um, we used to the brush going straight over that bridge, though, and just trying to do a bit of damage there, but... Uh, Ooh, mm. actually, and Krill Bill, two enough. players down. Low jumps back to spawn with that Ray ready. Clearly just wants to be able to slow down any Rainmaker push so that their teammates have time to get in there. Yeah, for sure. Although, interestingly enough, okay. Yeah, looking to get picks. Maybe mm. there might have been a call out there that we weren't privy to. Yeah, potentially that brush is still kind of hanging around that area. Mm. Um, well, the Rainmaker has been stopped, and now Natty's going in with the baller, and we're only one player up on Sailor Vimos. Yeah, so this will be Krill Bill's chance to now try and get into mid there, and uh, once they deal with this player, yeah, they're going to be trying to a push now. Hmm. All right. Um, so low so to go over that right side. Yep. Oh, no, no! Um, oh, it doesn't quite make Takes it. Takes into the drink. <laughs> oh, Can't man. quite make that hop. It's tricky, of course, when you're with a Rainmaker and, well, two players left on the field briefly. Um, oh. But, of course, because you are that little bit slower than you are normally, it's possible that you just miscalculate your speed because you're expecting to be going a little bit further. You think you yeah, might be able see, to make the jump earlier. Mm. Or... Yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, yeah. Usually it's quite easy to make that jump, but because you're a little bit slower with the Rainmaker, probably just yeah, didn't expect it to be, um, make that mm. much of a difference, I guess. Well, uh, we looks like Sailor Vimos are getting ground down a bit. Um, 2v3 here. Nessa retreating with the Rainmaker, and then Stingray just shows you that, like, Oh wow, and in Ooh. fact goes for a swim through the grates. Um, it <laughs> did get them away from the Stingray at least. Yeah. Maybe they're worried about, um, I didn't see, maybe maybe, um, maybe Lowe's running Respawn Punisher or something. Still, yeah. Krill Bill are on the move now. Yeah, but no we'll hesitation together. They're going over that bridge, or look, Kito maybe going a different way, just to try and sneak in a flank there. Inkel um, there, just moving in, full Rambo play. Um, and Nessa picks off Lakitu very nicely, and that's a pseudo wipe, I think, on Krill Bill. Yeah, um. Yeah, the, the, the Bucket Bay try and jump out, but not quite able to in time, so it does go down there. So, mm. uh. So now Capitan yeah, looks like they're just not even waiting for their team. Oh, wait, no, there we see. We see Nessa's Ooh. just been, I'm um, sorry, Snack rather, um, playing forward. Um. And that Charger goes down. This is a chance we have here for Sailor Vimos. They're not. Oh, no! The Baller Bump isn't enough, though! Oh, oh wow! Never mind, they just managed to sneak They stole so thing. much distance there! Wow. I'm um, very surprised they survived yeah. that baller, actually. Yeah, I was expecting the 1 2 bump and explode combo from the baller, honestly. Um, yeah. Still, that's, you know, in heated situations, sometimes you just, you know, gotta do what you think you can do. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Salabim is to do a fantastic job of just sticking together there. Um, and I guess that definitely made a difference in the end. Mm. Um, Krill Bill probably a little bit, you know, trying to deal with everyone there and eventually that Rainmaker just kind of snuck away from it all and got that lead. But uh, we do have Low here now, trying to get over that bridge there. Mm. Of course, Krill Bill have the luxury of not needing to worry about a Stingray. Nothing on Sailor Vimos side has it, and um, their longest range option needs a little more setup to hit things at extreme range than the Splat Charger does. Hmm, sure, yeah. Um, so, so they like to some extent once Krill when Krill are carrying the Rainmaker, then afford they can afford to just go for the bombardment strategy, but they don't have the luxury of the lead. Yeah, they're gonna have to put a little bit in to get a, um, get a lead like that now, um, and especially on this type of map as well, it can be a little bit difficult to get um, in there. Mm, and say the uh, not giving them that breathing space. Um, we do see Lakitu get a good flank though, um, and Pincer attack them. But that could have been another another big push. You know, it was only really down to the successful pincer that it got stopped. Hmm, for sure. So it'd be interesting to see now. In the you know in the closing seconds of the game, we just 45 seconds left, and uh, I wonder if Sabreem is just going to focus on maybe defending at this point. Um, well, they're looking pretty happy now. That Rainmaker's in the shield on their side of the map. In their yes, shields, in I would leave that shield there. Position for them now with those 30 seconds left. Yeah. So. Crew Bill have burned wow. their Stingray as well, although of course it's less valuable when you're trying to gain the lead compared to uh, compared to defend against it. Mm -hmm. um, but at this point, yeah, I think Crew Bill are really going to need either of like a lot of unforced errors or tremendous luck if they want to get that Rainmaker open and grabbed. Yeah, it's not looking good for them now. They were just three down again with just 10 seconds left, and, and um, yeah, Nessa so they just grabs the Rainmaker. Yeah. Kind of pulling back a tiny bit there, and. Yeah, I don't think there's a Well, whole of course, they know the Stingray out. can't come out. That Charger was mm. dead in his last little bit. So, yeah, you know, that's well played. Yeah, well played there by Sailor Vimos. Um, nice seeing that, that composure there. 
you know, it's it's often a, the case when you are sitting on the lead for. I mean, in that case, that was what a good chunk of the game, two and a half minutes, two minutes, maybe a bit more. Um, yeah, I believe so. So Creel Bill got the initial kind of uh, mm. decent lead there, and then Celebimo's probably within that minute uh, got that very good lead as well. So, mm. but it's it's you know uh, you do see sometimes teams end up sitting on their hands after that and kind of losing their direction, and then they just sort of end up falling down in a big mess of frayed nerves. Yeah, um, yeah. And you know, so, and then just get you know beaten in an overtime push. So none of that on display. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, Sailor Beam has definitely seemed like they had it. You know, they were just keeping that momentum going despite mm. you know having that strong lead and being in a position to just defend if they wanted to. But um, no, well played from them. Yeah. And maintain that threat of a knockout as well. You know, even quite late in the game, they were still attempting pushes um, and yeah. forcing Creel Bill to just you know wait essentially for the for the push to expend itself before they could try achieving scores themselves yeah yeah for sure um well it's flat zones time now um i'll be interested to see i i i'd like to see that cancer junior that um i think it was Creel bill this is terrible i can't remember uh, um, but i'm pretty sure it was Creel bill yeah, running it so. in um, yeah. in the clams game i'd love to see them bring it here for anchovy zones for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, Torpedo's very good. You can kind of just chuck them at people that are, you know, in the higher positions. Mm. Um, you got the Bubbles too, which is obviously, you know, always pretty good with zones, uh, like the one on Anchovy that we're yeah. about to see. So, and of uh, course, if your team's able to cover you, the thing can paint like crazy with the main weapon alone. Oh, definitely. Junior's one of those, yeah, really good painting weapons too. So, yeah, probably an all-round good weapon for this, uh, this situation. Mm. Um... Yeah, still, um, it's been interesting because I feel that in terms of just handling the combat encounters, both of these teams seem quite evenly matched. Yeah. I don't really um, feel we've been in a situation where either team feels like they need to make an adjustment. Everything that's sort of led to one team or the other winning and losing, it's almost all just been execution errors. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're kind of always seeing that kind of backline type weapon. You know, we've got, you know, the first game we had a ballpoint on either side, then we mm. had... Uh, it was a charger and was it, I think it was not, uh, yeah, it's still a ballpoint. Yeah, the ballpoint Nouveau two games in a row from St. Levimos. Yeah, well, so of course, when you've got, we yeah. sort of see a similar thing on this one as well. Those squid beacons, of course, they're just so delightfully good on Oh, on for our, sure, our yeah. Like, so wonderful when you've got a weapon that can act as your anchor and also provide the beacon support. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see it coming out yet again here. Yeah, so here we are, Splat Zones on Anchovy Games. And out they come, and we've got double bubbles there from Krill Bill, and we've got An a ray this time. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be terrifying to deal with. Um, and that, you know, a bit of special power up in there as well. Um, and then that ink, um, the Enperries and Enzap, meanwhile, working potentially devastating for just getting in people's faces and just, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just going to see that tri slosher though. Um... I guess with the armor that can kind of help as well, and it's mm. you know it's not too bad for turfing and the as well. Rush so. Nouveau as well. So um, some unconventional choices there. Um, interesting as well seeing um, Capitan there take the charger, um, and the vanilla splat charger as well. Um, no bomb rush from the fire thing, uh, no ball point either. Um, clearly, yeah. Sailor Vimos are very keen to just you know deal with the zone by the fact that they want to just get rid of Krillville, kill everybody, and then they can just paint when it's not contested. <laughs> Yeah, definitely no surprising choice. I would have uh, expected them to stay with the ballpoint. Um, I think it was actually Captain that went ballpoint earlier. So now, yeah, switching to Charger on this one, definitely, I mean, probably unexpected for me. Um, mm. But of course, so here we see yeah. Krillbill just able to exert so much pressure at long range with that Explosher. It can paint from, like, basically the only weapon that can even touch it at its maximum painting distance is the Splat Charger. Um, mm. And that's not one that's going to be going down into mid just so it can troll the Explosher. Yeah. Um, and another recap there from Krill Bill with Sailor Vimos left with only the Charger. This is going to be desperation plays for them. That Stingray, of course, can't do anything directly to the point. They're going to have to rely on their teammates to do the painting. Yeah, so Captain bring out that Stingray there after taking mm. out, uh, I believe it was low. But, and um... As much as I, I really don't think, like, I usually maintain Stingray's a wasted special in that kind of desperation and it's a pre take attempt, it, they made it work there because they used it to just hurt everyone away from the point. Yeah, and I mean, even, again, I would have expected Firefin for that reason, you know, being able to throw those suction bombs in the zone, but um, 
But yeah, they're making situations it work. like that, it kind of worked out, yeah. Mm. Krillville now perhaps panicking a bit, um, sort of getting picked off in ones and twos. Um, they do have a fair bit of you know time left on the objective counter. They're not in any danger of being overtaken. There we go. All it took was a bit of patience. So once again, it was just charged and they have gone down too. So now Krillville can only be working through that penalty now. And uh, yeah. Mm. And, and then, um, yeah, Natty. At least she's getting a bit cornered there. And, uh... Yeah, and, and you know, that was a smart play by Natty retreating and letting their teammate handle the squelch. Because if yeah, they stayed in, they probably would have just got the splat. Oh boy, that's um. Oh wow, I feel I feel for the Octo Rush there. <laughs> like I, I was expecting them to get the splat, honestly. Um, uh, yeah, same here. Um, still, um, Krillbill now looking like they've really got a, you know a vice around Sailor Vimos here. Yeah, so just a few more ticks there on that zone, and the uh, Sailor Moon is trying really hard to stop that, but uh, in the end, yeah, Krillbill managed to hold it. Just stuck in that awful trap where the objective pressure is so tight that. You can't afford to do anything but paint, and then the problem is that because that's what you're doing, and because your opponents know that's what you're doing, they can just pick you off really easily. You can't afford to shoot them back. Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, if you're the team defending in the final second, you can kind of expect that. Uh, yeah, the other team will be very desperate there, and um, not necessarily focusing on uh, you know taking out your players, but just trying to just stop that timer. So, mm. we'll be definitely taking advantage of that in the end there. Um. And yeah, so like unless you've got unless you've got you know bubbles or maybe a suction rush or something like even a splashdown on the right map, something that can just single-handedly you know cap in a way that doesn't allow an answer. If you're relying on your main mm. weapons to do the painting, it's just so risky when the when the time's that low. Yeah, I didn't see how many bubbles Krubel had at the end there, but I I was watching and it seemed like every, like nearly every you know twenty or so seconds there were bubbles coming out from them. Uh, <laughs> of course, exposure, so. we did have a main of special charge up on that Kenta splatter shot, and it can paint like crazy. Oh, I wouldn't wow, be surprised yeah. to see you know five, maybe even more. And they have, of course they had the explosher as well, which was mm. probably um probably the unsung hero of the team actually. You know, they did sure. a great job of just, when we had vision on them anyway, of just staying up on that platform, flinging out ink. Um, and even just focusing on the zone, making yeah. sure it's just capped at, you know, well, anytime possible. And, you know, which, because yeah. they were able to do so from such safety as well, you know, because that, you know, the, the dualies and the ends app did such a good job of sort of mixing it up and keeping Sailor Vimo's attention on them or on the point. Um, a lot of the time the explosion just didn't really have any pressure on it. It could basically do whatever it wanted. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, um, well played to Krillville. I think, you know, a much more confident play than we saw in either of the previous two matches, really. They were ahead from start to finish. Yeah, I think that was a, a much more definitive match in terms of, um, yeah, who was more confident going into that one. So, um, yeah, very shortly we'll be heading to Tower Control on uh, Sturge and Shipyard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, it'll be... Um, Interesting to see if we get much, much, um, well, mini adjustments made, rather. Um, mm. Both teams have actually taken that vanilla splat charger in the past, so maybe we're going to see a sniper duel. Yeah, um, I agree. I think that there's a good chance of that happening on, uh, you know, on this one. Um, well, there was one. So we do see one. Uh... And... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And Sailor Vimos... No, just confusing us a bit there, going... Yeah, <laughs> once again, um, expect, but, uh, yeah. playing against expectations, no Stingrays on their team. Um, we've got, what, Double Rain, um, Armor, and a Splashdown. But, honestly, those Tetras are so terrifying when they get their pace on that maybe, like, I can see Sailor Vimos just figuring they don't need to rely on their specials. Yeah, for sure. Um... Oh, boy! Oh, oh wow! What just happened? Wow, that's just that's that charge is single-handedly saving um, oh, Krillbill. Oh yeah, that was two going down. To that was two shot, in one snipe. Um, after Krillbill with three down and facing an early push, so well played there, Low. Wow. Well played. Very well played, and they're getting straight on that tower there. Um, mm. um, armor up oh. there, and then Low and forced to retreat, even <laughs> though they've got that special there for them. Um, it's clearly just having to wait a little bit. Um, yeah, the armor definitely making it a bit difficult there to you know take out that uh, ball point in one shot. So probably the smart choice there to, mm. to uh, avoid that situation. A furious exchange of fire there. Three players down in eyeball, um, and we'll see. Maybe Natty's going to go for a bit of a steel push. They do have teammates Ray giving them some safety on their flank. Yeah. Oh boy! And, uh, oh, <laughs> both choice in ending up going down there, and uh, yeah, three players caught out caught unawares in a row. <laughs> 
Yeah, so Kubo keeping this push going. Um, kind of a lot of pressure though. Mm. Um, and we do see, I think that's the, the Tetris there, just getting very aggressive. Um, and no! No, falling down the bottomless pit, but Krill oh, will, no. um... <laughs> we'll see, there's only one player left on the other team, so I, yeah, we've got the jumps coming in. I think this is going to be a real push. Yeah, so they should quite easily get through this checkpoint now. Um, it's make it very easier for them to make future pushes after that. Mm. And, and uh, then Natty gets that perfectly timed attack on the... On the Whoa, boy! Oh, wow. <laughs> and the direct against the... Very like, nice direct there, too. Oh, wow. Sitting on the greats there, no splash damage margin for Aero. It was direct or nothing. Wow. Very good aim there. Mm. Um, and, uh, of course, with the rest of crew build down, there's no checkpoint break there. So, as much as it's a nice score, Sailor Vemos could well be able to beat this. Yeah, so obviously Krill Bill, you know, getting it to that sort of that final checkpoint, but uh... Getting shredded now! Yeah, so... So we are coming with that armor too, so that's gonna help a lot, but you can tell they're pushing right up to their... Kind of, mm. That base beacons area. Beacons on the tower, I like that. So even if people need to duck off to, you know, to deal with someone, people jumping from spawn can just safely get on there. Capitan outmaneuvered, unfortunately. Um, Chich just steals the tower. Yeah, so they were aware of that kind of that sneaky flank there, but um, being able to do that to a ball point's impressive mm. because that thing's scary. It can deal with you at any range. Yeah, I, I would have. Yeah, I wouldn't have been sure about trying to flank um, as soon as they started facing me, but uh, so mm. it's now it's just a ball point, which I believe was would still be at spawn. So that is probably close to why they're on Santa Vimo's part. So. Uh, mm. Lakitu now um, going for the missiles um, and then perhaps just gonna try and no I'm not sure actually we'll see we'll see what the plan is there um, Sailor Vimos do have a numbers advantage Krubil might decide it's not worth pushing at this point yeah so Sailor Vimos uh... oh okay let's see where they're coming out from Krill Bill um, oh yeah and that raid then ends up tagging out, tagging, so. um, mm. tagging the Tetris so Sailor Vimos forced to do a push essentially you know while already on the back foot. Still, yeah, it's two down on each side, but um, mm. honestly, at this point, that would favor Cruel Bill from the other lead, so I guess for them it's kind of stalling mm. a little bit even, but uh... Yeah, you know, obviously they're not going to be hurt if the tower doesn't really go anywhere on either side of the map for the rest of the match. Um, mm. Sailor Vimos are the ones who, you know, have got the owners, so they've got to make things happen. And this could be it! This could Ooh. be something happening here! This is it, not far of the point. If they get that check down, point, and Capitan really quite happily on it, and oh boy, oh my so goodness. close! They just got a bit overconfident, and Natty was able to steal the tower. Oh, that's heartbreaking! Oh. They it was in their sights. They needed two ticks to get the overtake. Oh boy, yeah, so wow! I'm just jumping straight onto that tower, just stopped it immediately, and then you know, getting to that that same spot again. Wow! But uh, they're yeah. going down. Oh, heartbreaking! Like 30 seconds left. It's going to be hard for them to actually get to that point now, given mm. Kubo already. Well, and I think they split a fire under them as well because you know they've realised that their lead is fragile. They want to set something better. Mm. Um, Natty now just doing so much work there, pulling out that ink yet again. Going down though, Capitan stopping that push, but we get someone else continuing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. So, so a two point improvement, um, and so she's just mean, getting two people in a row. Yeah, I nearly thought they were going to try and sub an overtime lead there. Oh. Like, we were down two and looked like they were trying yeah. to set it up, but then they, you know, Sullivan was also going down in numbers, so. Yeah, wow. Oh, I think, yeah, they perhaps got a bit carried away there. There was a real threat mm. of, of Krubil getting wiped and allowing Sailor Vimos to have a comfortable push, at least back to mid. Um, mm. Fortunately, Chich was able to, you know, bring the necessary splats there, but it's not the kind of thing that you want to be depending on. You know, that that's um, against, like, when you're so evenly matched in combat against a team, you can't just assume that your people, like your your teammates, are just going to get casual doubles at critical moments. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they can, you know, seem a little bit lucky there. So <laughs> can't really rely on them too much. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, oh, wow. Um, I well played to from both teams there. still, but yeah, it seemed like Krubil kind of, I don't know. It seemed like we were a bit more comfortable despite being that close. They just, um, yeah, I think they were getting a lot more splats still. So. Mm. Well, of course, the other thing was that they, you know, it, it took and it took that last minute pressure um, for Sailor Vimos to get a good push going. You know, they didn't really have anything serious on the scoreboard until about 40, 50 seconds remaining. Mm, um, for sure. But kudos to them for actually managing to yeah. pull that off. Oh, um, so close. Yeah. So, so close. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Um, All right. Yeah. So, looks like we're heading. Oh, one sec. Yeah, of course. But yes, it is clams, as um, as I think was was implying. So we've got um, Skipper Pavilion here. A very different approach required from Piranha Pit. You've got to watch your angles here. Um, of course, given that near escape um, on Muscle Forge, and given how 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 I guess. It's, uh, you know how how scrappy the clams play was on the first map. I think both teams are going to be, you know, hopefully rallying themselves for this one, getting a little bit um, a little bit prepared for perhaps some more aggressive play than they managed on Piranha Pit. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. Krillbill here, if they get the win, they're sitting at match point for the rest of the set. Like at any point after this, they're just you know they're only one game away from a win. Yeah, just need that last, that's um, the last one. So, you know, they, they, they want to get this finished as soon as they can. Um, Sailor Vemos, obviously, they, you know, they this really is a it's a game they can't afford to lose. Um, given how yeah. they've performed in the in the Clams match against Krubil, I, I feel they've got decent odds here, though. Yeah, for sure. I, I felt they um, had better Clam control. Um, yeah, so obviously in that game one, you know, Krubil just getting that lead in overtime. But, um... I guess, yeah, Sailor Boomers can probably go in a, a bit more confident in this one than mm. knowing they've got a decent chance of this still. That's a very dangerous weapon lineup they've got there. Like between the Tetras and the Dapples, you can just shred a whole team with that pair when, if you get the right um, the right openings. Yeah, I don't know, I'm slightly surprised with that Explosher on this though. I mean, I guess mm. it can work for the bubbles, I, but. Um, I, don't, I, I disagree. Um, I think the Explosher is a really good weapon here on, on Skipper. There are a lot of situations mm. where you can essentially use its tremendous range to just hit people. When they can't hit you back at all. Obviously, the bubbles are fantastic in clams. Um, oh no! Oh well, sorry. And the ball is also fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but so, the main weapon uh, as well is just so good. So what does? The, sorry, uh, what's the Kenza P2 have again? That's you know, bomb and splash wall. So it's sort of got a little bit of the. Um, it's kind of like a, a mix of the both of the original 52 gals. Mm. Wow, we see that forlorn hope there. there. All that, um, the bubbles there. Capitan and just... is coming in to try and capitalize, but I don't think they've got the time for it because Capitan not holding any clams. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, a little sloppy sure there, I think. Was there, but, uh, yeah. So uh, nonetheless, Helium is getting some points on the scoreboard, but uh, yeah, not, not the best start, mm. I guess. Krill Bill, of course, have been gifted a pity clam from that. I'm not sure if that's the one Lakitu's holding or if it's just waiting underneath their basket. Um, and oh, I think just a bit caught unaware. I believe there. that was it actually. Oh no, they got they do have one at basket as well. I believe. Yeah, so that's good. Oh. Um, I mm. certainly, um, especially given that you know they're in this situation now, they got pseudo wiped, um, and it, they've still got a power clam now. They're not left in a situation where they're forced to harvest right away. Um, but mm -hmm. Chich has grabbed it now, um, possibly just to get the special charge going. Yeah, for sure. Um, although. I would think Explosher would nearly be worth holding on to that um, as much as possible. Yeah, um, but um, it seems it's just, you know, it's how it's going. Um, mm. Nesta taken out mid slash down. Go the long way, uh, yeah, uh, and in fact just gets intercepted and squashed yeah. there. Um, Loge yeah, goes no. in with the ball and could have been a decent super jump target for that. Um, oh, but it doesn't time out! Oh, wow. oh no, no, okay. <laughs> So, I'm not sure if, yeah, maybe they were trying to time that for Chich to jump in, potentially, but uh, it just mm. seemed like he was kind of overextending a bit. Yeah, the um, given the baller was going to be coming in anyway, it seemed like the smart play, if you were going to be jump were jumping in, would be to not stick your neck forward. Maybe they just weren't communicating properly. Yeah, although at the same time, you know, it could have acted as a little bit of a distraction, you know, Chich actually is a beacon mm. going all around that way. It did I guess the problem is it was a bit too effective as a distraction. Yeah, it didn't quite work out in the end, but... Uh, Maybe just trying to lure a couple of those, those um, Sailor Vemos players down there and then allowing that ball to get in a bit easier. But, mm. oh, oh, Ooh, and Capitan does get another break. Um, but once again, no no immediate follow-up. Um, we do have players yeah. in place. And, oh, here we go. A few clams coming, coming in from there. top. Just and now two coming more. in from low. It's all on Lakitu to stop them. And oh, does at least blunt the impact. But yeah, just that extra little bit. That's a good push so far. I, I still yeah, would hesitate I mean, probably, to call it a decisive push. one. Mm, it's the best push we've seen, but uh, still... Uh... Krillbill now sitting on 20 clams, and that's without their petty clam. Um, they could just wipe that score off the board right now if they were able to get a basket break. Yeah, exactly. If they can get just, you know, three super clams in here, and that's, that's already a lead. We've got a Booyah Bomb landing there. We've got... Um, Chich doesn't quite get the break, though. Um, oh, it looked like it was about to throw yeah. up quite. Right. Still, um, we do have it open now. Let's see how we go. We've got bubbles ready, but no, only one player. 
Um, Lakitu is oh, acting Lakitu as an anchor there, though. People jumping in. We're going to play a jumping in, too. Um, is that with the... No. Okay, there we go. Surely that's it. Yeah. Um, I feel there was an opportunity to extend it a bit further. Lakitu did have bubbles charged um, and did have a little bit of time to deploy them. Um, maybe the basket would have closed while those were out. Um, yeah, so hard Krill to say. appear to still have their pity clan, so... I feel like they could have tried to jump in with that even, but maybe they just is a bit difficult in that situation. But uh, mm. I'm just, yeah, I want to yeah, just grab that earlier, whether it wasn't really in that area. Time. We're seeing this, wow, this berserk aggression here, a little counterproductive yeah. perhaps. Um, given that they're already sitting on the lead, I feel Sailor Vimos shouldn't bother for a push unless they know it's going to be big. Yeah, for um, sure. Although, you know, game one, Krill Bill took really the opening, so. And we've got uh, Baller coming in with another Power Clam. Um, it blasts. Mm. And the Booyah Bomb, is that going to give them the cover they need? Oh be, no! We've got, oh. Uh, we've got um, I think, Snek going for a swim there. Um, oh, poor Snek, but it just, yeah. Krubil oh, just couldn't move fast enough. Mm. The basket closes, and effectively they scored basically nothing from that push. Yeah, I mean, if they got that Super Clam would have been the difference yeah. there. I think it's they them. used their Petty Clam for that as well, so if they don't have a Power Clam, they're not getting overtime. There we go, really Chich really making one the in the absolute nick of time. Um, you could not have timed that any more fine. <laughs> yeah, so this will be enough to oh, get it in. But yeah, with two players it. down, this is really going to be a clutch play for, for Creel Bill. I don't like their odds here. And nice. surely this is going to be a timeout now. Um, yeah, so not, yeah, we're not quite able to do a repeat of game one there, but... Uh... Very well played there from Sailor Vimos, and again, another pretty close clams game in the end. There, yeah, say. that's a, a confident play. Um, we've got, we've got, um, yeah, Low expressing some regrets about the uh, about the power clam baller combo because, of course, when you detonate the baller, you lose the power clam. Um, yeah. I would have almost been tempted in that position to just to just um, double down and dare Sailor Vimos to to break you because you can probably like I wouldn't have been surprised if the baller could have gotten within throw range and just let itself get shot. But, you know, hindsight is golden. It's much easier to make suggestions sitting at a commentary desk than it is in the heat of the moment during a match. Oh, most definitely. It's probably a lot more relaxing doing it. Yeah. <laughs> seeing the overhead view everything go down. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we've got, you know, Sailor Vimos are back in the game here after two consecutive losses, um, and one of them quite decisive. They've shown that they do have the grit to stare down a, a retake push. Um, mm. So it's, you know, we're looking at Game 7 minimum. Um, so sure. Mori Towers Rainmaker, um, what are your thoughts here? What do you reckon we're going to see? Ah, uh, Rainmaker. So, yeah, Marais is interesting for this, you know. I, I guess a lot of the time uh, people tend to go up that kind of large wall on the side. Mm. Um, because as soon as you get to that very top, you know, you, you take quite a few points there just by getting to that top. Um, and, but then you've also got, you can kind of got their snipe as well and then onto that rail. That's another uh, typical way yeah. that uh, players go for situations, right? Yeah, or even just along the ground and up the half pipe. If there's no one there to stop you, then it's pretty clear Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, climbing walls tends to just always be, you know, a way of just kind of skipping a lot of points there. Yeah. Um, but it yeah. can be a bit more difficult to pull off, I you guess. Hit, you hit the thresholds. Um, yeah. It, I mean, both teams have been, like, both teams have really, I feel, have had almost all like their weapons have all been either long or short range every time we haven't really seen that much of that sort of medium ish you know like that splat shot pro or rapid blast to kind of play it's all been punch your face off with it with a shooter or duelies or you know hang back with the ballpoint and the charger yeah for sure you know we're seeing like you know the, the perry's a lot the juniors mm. the ends up uh we see and a sploosh there even interesting pick. we've got i think vanilla splat duelies there um from from natty um, interesting going for the missiles rather than the end parries. I feel the curling bomb would have been a very useful tool here. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, but the curling bomb's in that sploosh as well. I think that's, that's what you're referring to, but yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the vanilla sploosh. So maybe they figured one curling yeah. bomb was enough. Um, yeah. Um, meanwhile, Sailor Vimos opting for a, a somewhat more conventional set of, set of weapons. Um, getting their faces smashed in right now. Yeah. And the rain doing its thing and making life hard for spectators. Mm. So, uh, two down there on Krill Bill. Mm. Um, Perhaps but... overextended a bit. Um, yeah. But then just that... Wow! Natty just oh. not caring at all about the ball Very point. confident there, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like... I don't think I'd have had the nerve to try that. I'd have just expected to get shredded. 
Um, yeah, going so, down to a um, yeah, walk like that. Must have yeah, just, dealing like yeah. good footsies play there, just making sure that they can never quite be sure where you know where they were. Yeah, um, and just, oh boy, yeah, and that's a missile out. splat too. Missile this has splat, been a yeah, good, so a good um, life for Natty so far. So yeah, we've got the Rainmaker properly game. picked up for the first time. The climb's all inked, and it doesn't look like there's anyone there to stop it, but it will get intercepted right away. Ooh, but just imagine them, uh, you know, make it to the top and get those, those points we are talking about earlier, climbing the wall, so... That so now Sailor Vimo's you know, in a situation where they might decide to just, um... I think as yeah, Ali's I mean, fond of pointing out, the exact same thing they, they might just they... skip that. I would be surprised yeah. if they try for the, um, for the snipe climb now, um... and just use the ink rail. Um... They're in a very good position to do that right now, actually. Um, plenty of time left on the Rainmaker, um... and at this point, I think, yeah, the combat's not going too badly for them. Um, Capitan using that cover very nicely, and in fact getting an indirect splat, and surely this is going to be an overtake. Yeah, so getting an overtake right on those rails there, and... And using that heavy artillery from the Rainmaker, this could be big. Um, Krillbill, it's really all on Natty now to stop this from becoming complete lock, um, walkover. Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that's a wipe though on that, so the yeah, just like, yeah, like I think... all going down the... Basically the same moment. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they just, um, unfortunately, just there were too many different ways that they had to look. Um, Krillbill did a very good job there of being patient and all going in at the same time. Yeah, for sure. And Lakitu uh, now, um, perhaps, yeah, there we go, we've had the call made, but that's not a jump worth, that's not a climb worth making. Um, but it seems like Sailor Vimo, so just everywhere they go. Um, Nessa doing solid work there, like... It's not easy to shoot the target that high when there are people, you know, smashing you from both sides. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, mate, very difficult for Rainmaker there to make a choice, you know. As you said, players coming from either direction that the Rainmaker would take, which is very well played there from Sailor Vimo. It's not really giving him a chance to, uh, yeah. find some points there, but, uh... Oh boy, and the ball point is just... Oh no, the custom Julie Squelchers! Um, I guess, yeah, devastating pursuit weapon in that way. They've got so much range, so much mobility. Mm. Um... And at this point, Sailor Vimos, um, if I were in their shoes, I'd be trying for another push. Um, you know, Krillbill had proven quite fragile in defense until that last minute effort there that, you know, that prevented this from being a complete knockout. Um, and they've proven pretty confident on the attack themselves. I think Sailor Vimos really want to be, you know, getting them on the back foot, dictating the terms of this match. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, Chich, trying to get a push there, but, um, do we have support of the... Oh, the boy! Oh, wow. <laughs> and that splashdown from Lakitu, just deleting two like... people. Um, <laughs> perhaps goes to Lakitu's head a bit, though, because the ball point doesn't care about it. Oh, whoa! Oh, oh, was that the wait, Rainmaker's that? blast that, that killed the, the ball point? I, yeah, I this is looking pretty actually. good for Cruel Bill. Just a few points off there, I think, but... Mm, we'll I think they can do it. They've got the... Yeah, they've won the pop. They've got a bit of clear air. And low oh, keeps got... I didn't see... Was oh, that Ty or was that... One point oh, off. no, here we go. There we go. Wow. Oh, there it is. Wow. Yeah, just that relentless pressure there. Sailor Vimos really didn't have any time to think. Doing a very good job, though, just getting those... It's those constant pops. I'm just getting those micro pictures that get him, getting him over the line there, and... Yeah. Still like, doing that. Even in the face of that, you know, easier, like, time to get back onto the point from respawn distances, they were, until now, really, just kept on getting the better of Sailor Vimos. Yeah. Very well... Yeah, very well played there to pull that off. Um, mm. So now, you know, with 20 seconds left, Sailor Vimos are going to have to be playing this very carefully. Um, they've really only got one chance at this, uh, and it will likely go into overtime. Uh, Still the rain make at that point. Yeah, they're not going to be able to get there before it happens. And there comes the rain! Oh, and it looks like we're not even going to get overtime awarded. That perfect timing there from Krill Bill, yeah. making it so that it was genuinely impossible for the Rainmaker yeah. to be popped and picked up. Um, any, you know, much earlier, and there would have been that risk of, you know, a fresh pickup and more time on the Rainmaker. Um, yeah, you know, very cool, calm, and collected there. A good stingray. Yeah, so uh, that puts Krillbill now to four wins, which means I just need uh, one more. So uh, mm, match point. You know, yeah. Um, so they got three chances of this, really, to take this out. <laughs> they um, got three chances, <laughs> but they don't want them. They just want one chance, yeah, and they want to make I mean, it work. Ideally, yeah. <laughs> um, they don't want to need them, rather. Of course, you want more chances if you can get them. Mm, um, sure. Yeah. So reef zones, um, not a bad one to be on when you're sitting at match point. It is a map mm. that really, like, big scores on this map 
usually depend on being able to either lock your opponents out completely or fluster them and force them into splitting them, you know, just getting stuck in a spawn stagger. Um, yeah, for sure. And being sitting at that, you know, that large scale match point, that's a big multiplier in terms of how, like, how to engineer that situation. People are more likely to panic when the stakes are higher. Mm, absolutely. Um, yeah, so obviously this is now like a two zone map, but it's it's interesting. It still kind of really feels like a one zone map given how close they are together. And, well, and how you know, key the bridge is to like, controlling them both too. Yeah, the controlling the bridge is still very much a big part of this. Um, you know, obviously the zone was under the bridge before, but now it's either side of it. So yeah, arguably it's even more important. Mm, mm. Um, but of course you do have like from, there's pretty much every single point of both zones you've got line of sight and painting capability for every point of both zones if that makes sense like yeah, if you're sitting yeah. on it then you can paint everything relevant to the objective yeah for sure um, unlike some of the two zone maps even that are quite close where you either either because of you know weird shapes or barriers or whatever you know you you don't actually you can't do that like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it's difficult on manta it's impossible on um on black belly um yeah so I, I do wonder whether we'll still see maybe a Kenzie Jr. again. Um, I'd, I'd be keen. I feel Torpedoes like, yeah, are fun like on the reef. Works well on um, this. Yeah. Bubbles are really nice for that pair of zones as well because you can just, you know, put them down like perpendicular to the bridge, run them underneath, and like you could probably get both zones capped with a single special if you time it right. Yeah, and you know, even just the lobbing the torpedo <laughs> sort of over that bridge. Um, you know, you nearly don't even have to think about it. You just, you know, you see the bridge yeah, right there occasionally. Yeah, just chuck it there and watch them <laughs> yeah. dance. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it looks like we're not getting our wish granted. Um, Ooh, some interesting new deco weapons deco. coming out, actually. Um, yeah. yeah, that Slosher I'm, Deco. I, um, I don't think we've seen it at all this this match, but it's a good pick for this one. I like its ability to just you know do a lot of damage up on the bridge. You've got so much painting yeah. power with the sprinkler, and just being able to do a baller from above is always fun on a zone map yeah. like this. You know, given there's two ballers off on the Sailor Vimos, they're potentially going to try and time their ballers to maybe try and catch both at the same time. Um, but yeah, I guess, ooh, wow, three going down another side just then. We've so got the world's smallest down. push back to back from both teams. Um, yeah, and the 98 both and the 99. Players, players very carefully. Yeah, um, Natty here doing a good job of holding their own, like, I think completely unsupported. They were the last player up on their team, um, just keeping mm. that cap alive. Yeah. And, uh, ooh, taking out Nessa there as well. That's a nice, nice point sensor there. Yeah. Oh, the ball. Oh, I'm quite able to get to that wall. Oh, okay, they went down to the ball plane. It looks like the ball there in that situation, but, uh... Mm, so Sailor Vimos here looking in, like, reasonably in control now. Um, they've managed to set neutral, they've got a good chance of a cap. Yeah, so Capitano just, you know, kind of trying to see how he take that back, mm. but um, they are now disadvantaged number-wise, so... Mm. Unfortunately, they never had that ability to sort of do the force multiplier. They, oh no! Oh. A bit of a misjudgment about the suction bomb there. Um, yeah. This is looking very nice for Krillbill now. Yeah, so Krillbill pretty comfortable at the moment, even. Um, mm. They can just keep this, keep this control going and just, you know, kind of lock Sailor Vimos out as much as possible, then... Um, you know, this is all they need really to get this whole set, so... Yeah, all they need to do at this point is just rely on, on that ability to inflict panic. Um, so far, Sailor Vimos don't seem to have taken the bait, though. They are sticking together, and that's three down like that! Oh... Here we go. Yeah. They still like haven't got the cap, though. Yeah. Onto the hat, never mind. There's a big penalty there. Oh, <laughs> I could that second zone, actually, but I yeah. know they do. Yeah. Um, so well played by Sailor Vimos, you know, at 26 ticks remaining, that is real, That that's panic time. Yeah, that's what they needed. So. Um, they really, if they didn't get it set there, they probably would have just been looking at a knockout. Um, mm. But they didn't rush in unsupported, they stuck together. Um, still, Krillville have not faced by that at all. They're ready to just repeat this performance. Yeah, oh, I just noticed in chat, is this actually a triple pull comp? I believe it is. Um. <laughs> Uh, the ball point, maybe? Uh, yes, I... Uh, no, I don't believe it's triple baller. Um, it's rain on that ball point. Um, oh, it's rain, okay. Yeah, I, I always forget which one's Yeah, <laughs> um, so Sailor Vimos, um, sorry, um, yeah, yeah. Um, two ballers, rain and inkjet. Alright. Oh, yeah. So, inkjet uh, coming out there, trying to get out that slosh of deco, but, uh... Getting assist so on them, gets, I think. Yeah, yeah. Assist in but, the end, yeah. Yeah, the problem was that the, the caps just got stolen from them. Um, 
So that penalty is going to frustrate them a bit. They do have the numbers going for them though. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think Krill Bill are still pretty happy here, honestly. Yeah, honestly, it does feel like Krill Bill, just from, you know, most of the time do have the numbers advantage. Um, you know, Sather Beamers did get that wipe earlier, which, you know, got in the zones for a little bit, but Krill Bill just seem to be, you know, they just don't seem to have any issues getting back in and, you know, taking it back after that sort of thing happens, so... Well, that said, Sailor Vimos did Ooh. a very good job there of just clinically picking Krill Bill apart. They didn't manage to, you know, they, they took out three players one by one, pushed the Explosher back, and now they're scoring. Yeah, that being said, they are down a player now, so... And that armor there that. makes it un... Yeah, poor Snake just gets oh. stuck, caught out of position. Uh. And here we see that... Devastating power of the explosion. It can it can it can outpaint half the weapons on um, Sailor Remo's team while out of their attack yeah. range. And it does feel like one you know one kind of slosh and they can nearly take the whole zone as well even. Mm. Well, and of course yeah. you can see them they're stacking that splash damage using the 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 explosion there, using the bombs, using the ink jets blasts as well. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, very dangerous there. Um, and yeah, they're really just piling on the pressure here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, Sailor Beam is starting to run out of time here. They're going to be starting to get a little bit desperate now, I think, to... Yes. You know, they're, they're, they're the one consolation they've got, though, is that Krill Bill keep on just gifting them an uncontested point. Um, almost every time Sailor Vimos have been able to just, you know, have been able to cap its beam because Krill Bill just weren't there. Um, yeah, when when sure. Krubil are contesting, when they've got that miserably strong inking power on the explosion, you basically can't touch the points. Um, yeah. So, I mean, well played Krubil. Bill. I feel that could yeah. have been a knockout, though. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, I don't know, we haven't even seen a knockout yet, have we, I believe? I don't think we have. Um, Anchovy Zones, perhaps? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was a knockout, That's but yeah, otherwise no. One, um, yeah, and yeah, obviously, two. Splat Zones is by far the most knockout-friendly mode, so... Mm, there we go. Sure. Um, a hotly contested set there. Um, hats off to Sailor Vimos for really making Krill Bill work for it. Um, a 5-2 yeah, sure. result in the end. Yeah, I mean, we saw some especially close games in Clam Blitz and Rainmaker. Mm. Um, even the Tower Control game too was. Uh, yeah, was yeah. Extremely like, close. Best, well, like, yeah, yeah. I, I would not I have mean, been surprised to see that, Sailor Vimos yeah. walking away with a win in um, there on Sturgeon. Uh, in the end of the day, of course, they did not. Um, Krill Bill held their nerve at that critical point in those um, those pushes, and mm. yeah, you know, only managed to build from that. Um, yeah. Yeah, sure. it was interesting seeing this in action. Um, I do feel that they that Krill Bill did underperform in Clams, especially um, when looking at the second game. In the first one, it mm. seemed like both teams were a little bit uneasy. I'm not sure whether it was the map or just because it was the first game in, in the match and they were just warming up. But, you know, they went for very shaky pushes and they were content to usually just get the lead and then just go, okay, we're just going to stop or relax or whatever and get wiped. Um, yeah, exactly. Whereas I mean, in mm. yeah, like um, in in Skipper Pavilion, Sailor Vimos were out the blood. Um, they knew that you know they needed to stave off that match point for Krill Bill as long as possible, and Krill Bill just were very disorganized when dealing with the lead that Sailor Vimos set. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you mentioned earlier in game one on Clams that uh, you know, every single push that happened was taking the lead back. Um, mm. and that just yeah, I guess that kind of stemmed from you know, I guess either team just trying to focus on getting that lead and then yeah we've got the lead just uh you know that, that's enough for now yeah <laughs> but um it was yeah it seemed a little bit different for sure in that in that second clams match so yeah. <laughs> never mind so um that's the end of our video file there um oh, we'll yeah. just uh <laughs> just do a, a, a quick sloppy thing there um but um, we're done with Krill Bill versus, versus Sailor Vimos anywhere, but please don't go anywhere. We've got a fresh mash match all lined up for you. Um, this one, I believe we do need to do the overlays, so we are going to um, mute the stream for a little bit. Um, please don't go anywhere, though. We'll be back very soon. Um, I believe we've got... Um, oh, I should remember this. I've been saying it enough times. That's it. Kokrotsis taking on Team Alpha, um, one of the two pickup teams for, for um, formed from this season. Um, mm, so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing Kukrotsis in action recently. We did run a few, um, a few scrims with them, but Team Alpha at the moment are a mystery to me. 
So yeah, let's let's find out what we've got. <laughs> 